face. Hey. <laughs> Uh, hi, hi everybody. Thanks for joining this. Um, whether you are watching live or joining as a replay later, my name's Ruth Pringle and I'd like to, I'm delighted to introduce you to Abigail Philbrook, who is joining me to talk about um, online English teaching. Uh, Abigail's an online English teacher and I'm going to take this opportunity to find out um, how she works, who she helps and get some tips for you if you're looking for an online English teacher. So hi, Abigail. It's lovely hey, to finally meet. We have been in the same circle for a couple of years now, overlapping. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely watched your work with interest. Um, the way you think about community is why I reached out to you and asked you to be a, a featured online English teacher because um, I, I like that you share it's as simple as that like you're you're not in this for yourself you're in this as a as an energy in a mm. system that can actually needs a little bit of an overhaul it needs revision so our um our if you're looking for an online english teacher you probably don't need to know the full story but basically it's it's actually quite hard being an independent online english teacher it's hard um, to find clients in all the noise and within that the noise is like the big schools the corporate schools that have lots of money for adverts and the noise is like some quite bad English teachers who make a lot of noise <laughs> would you agree with that uh, some very uh, yeah loud louder uh, maybe they they take over and they say things that Maybe are not completely true all of the time. Mm. Yeah, I well, want to be generous. I'm, yeah. <laughs> there are there are good teachers. This is why we are both doing what we do. There's some fabulous teachers, and we, I think we both want to help the fabulous teachers, and even perhaps help the the teachers who aren't fabulous to get fabulous. Yeah, because you know i i learn every day uh, it's it's working out how to help people is an ongoing learning process um depending on who you're working with so who do you who's who do you normally teach do you teach everybody or no my my main um less lessons oh, i don't call them lessons anymore actually i call them meetings i have an english conversation club and that's for mothers. And I chose it very specifically to be for mothers because we have this kind of, um, I would say, unique experience. When you're a mum, and especially when you've got little uh, young kids, um, it's hard to get to lessons. Mm -hmm. You just, you, as much as you want to study and you want to have that time, to spend on on English or whatever language it is, it's so hard to to attend lessons sometimes. So I started this club for mums, and it's so flexible. We meet six times a week, and if people can come six times if they can, or they can turn up once a week, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, you know, stay for ten minutes, stay for an hour. It's all fine because we're all mums and we all understand that it's hard to get an hour to yourself to sit in front of a computer and just chat in English. So it's I flexibility. I love that you're creating something that's for the mums. So it's like it's me time in a way. Yeah. And then there's also like a lot of people when if I work with them, they're like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I haven't done my homework. Mm. I'm like, it's for you. <laughs> it's not for me. Yeah. Who blames me? And you just take that pressure off. This is a no pressure zone that makes yeah. like showing up in English enjoyable yeah. because there's a community of people who are going through the same things. It's like when you take your kid to any baby club, there's you sit and talk about what the kids are doing and what they've achieved and, and how bad your week was. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's, and it's, um, yeah, like I said, we, it's not lessons that I'm doing now. It's meetings um, because I don't really teach. Um, all the, the people in the club are higher level. 
and they don't need any more lessons. They've got everything they need is up here. They just need a chance to get it out and just talk and have a conversation. Having a conversation is very different than having a lesson, speaking a bit in a lesson. You know, having a conversation is completely different skills mm. than, than you having in a lesson. <clears throat> and it's about you that's the language that's that's really kind of deep it's it's like a different level of of need like we can learn english to discuss a subject that we don't care about or we can be using our language to express our heart and uh, it's very different and it's very powerful it's a wonderful tool yeah. do you set um topics to talk about or does mm. it yeah so weekly we have a topic like this week obviously it's valentine's day so uh we're talking about relationships and uh you know what's a good relationship um also about we're from all over the world so we can talk about cultural you know what's the difference what's japan what do we do in japan for valentine's day what's in what happens in the uk what happens in um poland you know it's all all different uh cultural exchange as well mm, wonderful um, and how do people join your club? Uh, they can come along to my website and you can join for monthly. Um, it's $25 US for a month, which is really very good value, I think. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, just join um, when you can, when your sh sh uh, schedule allows it. Beautiful. Okay, that's it. That's absolutely great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, do you, um, I also know you for working with um, inside ELT and organising community events and sharing like other language teachers uh, work with English learners. Can you tell me a little bit about why you're doing that? Yeah, as as you were saying before, it's so difficult in the online world to, to be heard when you're a uh, uh, just one teacher trying to get your voice out there and it's it's so noisy and I always thought there's then there must be a way for teachers and students and learners to communicate somehow you know teachers spend a lot of time speaking to one another we go to conferences and we just chat to other teachers and we we share a lot with other teachers but we're not speaking in the same way to learners so I had an idea. I thought, mm -hmm, I could do a summit. Why can I do a summit for English teachers to speak to learners? And my business coach at the time went, yeah, go for it. You you can, you know, you can do that. Like, oh, can I? <laughs> really? Uh, <laughs> I tried it. And um, tw at that time, 21 teachers um, came along and said, oh, yeah, I want to I want to be part of this. And so that was the start of my uh, events organising um, career. And now, well, um, yeah, I mean, it sounded like you helped eight hundred people. I mean, you you had a good number of English learners show up, and um, I, I listened to an interview that you did for Tessel Pop, and you kind of point out that um, that a lot of people in their English pathway they don't know what's next, especially mm. you know you talked about your mums and and how they've got a good level of English they might they don't want any more English lessons but they they could really still use a different kind of English experience mm, yeah. you're, you're showing people these options yeah yeah as teachers we kind of we know, we know some of the options you know we know the techniques that we like and the methodologies that we like but the learners don't know these things and they don't know the huge variety of teachers there are out there mm -hmm. So yeah, I really wanted to show off, you know, yeah, you could you could do this, you could do journaling, you could do uh, your own videos. Yeah, the it's um, you know full of possibility, and there are teachers to show you the way as well. Absolutely, and I, I think this is why I've started the online teacher feature like again it's a window into uh, I don't even I don't like to use the terminology classroom either <laughs> it's, a, it's a window into what to expect what what kind of um, teaching styles are out there because it's really important to know that there's not one right answer for 
for every single person. There's probably not even one right answer for one person. There's just lots of good options. Yeah. And you don't even have to pick just one. Maybe you want to work on like pronunciation for a period and then expand that into conversation experiences or or like having fun with language is so underrated. Like journaling, amazing. <laughs> we do we do journaling as part of our holidays. It's just mm -hmm. such a good way to um like just fall in love with the language really and express yourself in it and yes. and and feel um feel like it's part of part of you definitely. Mm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's so much out there that's all focused on like doing exams or, you know, your business level English has to be like this and your exam, you should be passing these exams. And no, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't. Your goals are valid, you know, whatever they are, if they want to be artistic and, and journal and use your art to express yourself in English. Yeah, that's a valid goal as well. I mean, I would say I would even go further and say that's the reward, because most people we've worked with have, like, have learned through a school environment. They've learned through an academic mm -hmm. environment, and they've they've possibly never actually had this freedom of of play yeah. to actually <laughs> like yeah. being this like just to see what their language can do for them. And mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's wonderful. Treat yourself to this. It's joyous. Yeah, absolutely yeah. lovely <laughs> mm, that's right yeah um and then you um you have a, a summit coming up for english language teachers can we mention this just briefly oh yeah absolutely um not just for english language teachers yeah oh, okay. any language teachers yeah that's you're fabulous. very welcome yeah to come um it is the 7th of a 7th of march until the 9th of march online and it's about um, growing your business as a, a language teacher. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, and is this something that you've done before? Have you helped people in this way? Yeah. This um, this is the second edition of this summit. It's called Momentum. Um, yeah. Last year uh, we had uh, about nine hundred teachers attending online. Uh, for Momentum last year. This year's theme is about how to find your next student. Mm. So yeah, whether you're like the first first student even or your 50th, 100th student, it's uh, yeah, how to how to find those students and um, show them your, yeah, your talents and your skills as a teacher. Yeah, absolutely. It's just what what motivates me is that at the same time that there's all these English teachers spending their time going, ah, I, 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 I need, I need my, to find clients. There's all these clients lost on the other side of a keyboard, unable to find their English teacher. And uh, yeah, just knowing how to search, what to search for, it's just such a such a a, a big way of doing it. Great. Mm. So are you bringing in um, uh, different experts from different fields or? Yep, this year we've got 15 speakers um, speaking about like, social media marketing, um, how to be accessible with your lessons, whether you should start a school or stay solo. Um, yeah, lots of different topics, but all focused on how to get those students in. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I've used a lot of resources in in the past for, for building like the this knowledge just um you know we have as english language or as language teachers we we have our, our passion for the language passion for helping but not necessarily great business skills <laughs> or or good uh, marketing skills that that we can you know everybody can get better definitely at whatever stage you are and again yeah. this focus on community such a wonderful thing getting people sharing um not keeping your your cards close to your chest and mm. only like oh like like as you're you're helping people and mm. you're growing by helping people and i think we can all do that because mm -hmm. that is just possibly the best way for you to find the people who you can help best yeah by sharing 
by sharing your resources because then other people, the, the people who are looking for the English language coach or the language coach are then more aware of what's out there and they can find the right person to help them. Mm. And it's wonderful. Like I, I have to thank um, LinkedIn for a lot of it, for the network, mm -hmm. the really kind of cool group of people helping each other on that platform. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. There's so many teachers, yeah, joining up and yeah, not treating it as like a competition. It's not. It's not a competition. There's two billion English learners <laughs> in the world, you know, let alone all the rest of the languages. Yeah. So, you know, you can find your people, and you don't have to sort of push other people down to get there. No, and like at the heart of that, I think is just a genuine desire for wanting the best progress for the the client or the student as well because there are, there's um you know people have the capacity to help people mm. differently yeah. um, you mentioned we we sort of skirted over people making promises about achieving things um i um i wonder if you could talk a little bit about um the the red flags in our industry the the things that perhaps if you're searching for an online English teacher it would be in your heart you'd go like whoa no I would avoid that one that person um what are some things to not trust or, or not go for oh it's so it's hard to say because some some people will love some of the the um techniques and the kind of um the way te some teachers teach Mm -hmm. And for others, that's just a complete turn off. Mm -hmm. So, and I know when you're starting out teaching as well, it can be easy to go down the, so when you're posting on socials, you're posting like, say this and don't say that kind of things. And, you know, the sort of language content, educational stuff. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, learners don't necessarily need that. They can get that from another website. They can get that anywhere from a book or any website. They want to know you as a teacher. Right. So, yeah, it can be um, tricky. tricky yeah, know. I mean, there's a lot of people who do it, which perhaps makes it other teachers think that they should do or they must do it. So mm -hmm. you're right, it doesn't this discount anyone completely but um instead like again uh, in instagram and especially instagram i think we, we see a lot of posts saying like don't pronounce this word like this mm -hmm. don't say this um don't 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 is the message it's mm -hmm. kind of fear marketing yeah um, why would you say that was a negative thing i don't think that's very helpful when you're saying um yeah don't say this say this and um oh don't it's it's very attractive as a learn as a japanese learner myself i was like oh what am i doing wrong here mm -hmm. but it creates such a sense of uh insecurity for the learners because they're constantly saying well is is this the best word to use or do i sound dumb if i say that am i pronouncing this right I can't even get my words out myself. <laughs> we all make mistakes. But as as teachers, we've got to build up people's confidence and say, this is absolutely fine. You know, native speakers, whatever that means, native speakers say this on a daily basis. Um, yeah, this is fine. And this is also fine. They're both... <laughs> <laughs> some of the um some of the things that you see are like um don't say this say this are actually things that we get wrong like they are things that everybody unless you're like writing a really formal letter to the the prime minister um you you would actually use them in conversation they're like there's there's a there's a difference between common usage and technically correct usage and and yeah, yeah building that fear just yeah. is so inhibiting like so look for people that perhaps make you feel positive about using your language yeah. at whatever yeah. level you are whatever yeah. Level. yeah exactly you yeah it's 
Yeah, it's on the teachers to encourage people to speak and, and not to keep saying, oh, no, that's wrong. Well, you got that wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're so um, yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We have to we have to be um you know, teach this is is kind of um um yeah, getting into marketing now, but we can say better things as teachers that will encourage people to take our lessons rather than this or that kind of posts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, come on. <laughs> <Better> everyone. <laughs> yeah, just um yeah, be be somebody that people want to be in a room with would be a really good start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can show some personality. People, you know, people want to if you're a teacher, they want to be taught by you, not by a, a Instagram screen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're allowed to show some personality. Yeah, absolutely fabulous tips. All right, I'm going to drop your your website details into the comments of this. Um, are you happy for people to just ping you a message, find you on LinkedIn and or Facebook, and and just send you inquiry about joining your your conversation club? Absolutely. Yeah, that's fine. That sounds absolutely fantastic. And as well, now thank you. I have got a a better insight into how you help people and I can certainly pass people on um, because this seems you know it seems perfect for for the right people I've, I've been in the mum situation I know exactly what you're talking about in terms of finding time for yourself and not being able to commit and sort of fearing committing really so yeah how nice to have a community an international community mm. i want to join it just to meet all the international people <laughs> yeah i enjoy it it's really fun good perfect okay abigail thank you so much for joining me today thank you Ruth. thank you take care